Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's, uh, that's, that's really yeah, a lot of them just believe it. Just like Are you there? Yeah. 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 There you go. Nevertheless, I want to come today, first of all, to say to you that 
we are very, very excited about our first holiday drop. -in. Has anyone heard about this? Have <laughs> you heard about it? Raise your hand. Keep your hands up. How many plan to attend? Keep your hands up. How many plan to have fun? <laughs> uh, we felt it was important that we begin to engage our family and our staff uh, just to celebrate and have a good time. So we are, we're having this as our first holiday celebration. We hope to build on this as we go along. Uh, we know that the holidays are a very special time, but we want to say thank you for what you do throughout the year. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of be in an informal setting and get to know each other better. And just say thank you to each and every one of our employees. So certainly, all of you who had your hands up, uh, we were taking attendance. So we <laughs> uh, certainly, that was the first thing I just wanted to make sure that we talked about. The second one is that the North Carolina Community College System is beginning to uh, go forward to our legislature uh, to talk about what are the needs of the North Carolina Community College system. <coughs> there are two things that we're really, really, I'm really excited about. And we're excited about all of the lists that, that we put together. There are two things that are on there. And one is short-term workforce training. You heard me mention just a moment ago that I'm going to a uh, meeting where we're looking at how we develop that public private partnership in Pitt County. Now, the thing that we are looking forward to is having funding to make sure that our employers can get that short term workforce training through our continuing education department so that individuals who want to go to work can get that short term training and go to work. So that's one of our, our first priorities within the community college system. And what we're planning to do is ask for 11.6 11, $11 million dollars in order to fund that <coughs> on a recurring basis, not on a one-time basis, but on a recurring basis, so that we can work with our employers and for those who are unemployed in our community, give them that short-term training and they can go directly to work. That's what folks are looking for these days. And certainly, we're, we're going to play that role here at Pitt Community College. The second thing that I'm concerned about is salary. <coughs> I'm going in the positive What we found out in looking at the salaries of faculty, I'm going to throw that out there first, and, and we have measures on that, is that the faculty is one of the lowest paid. We're one of the best community college systems, but our faculty is one of the lowest paid. I'm not forgetting about staff. It's just Thank that you. we have data. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to make sure everybody understands. I'm, I'm not going to one over the other. <laughs> and the reason that uh, we look at faculty is because we have data that we can compare across the nation. We don't have that same data on, on staff. However, what we're asking for is to increase the salary of our faculty and staff because of the job that you did. We know that the faculty now I think you're at an average 40, I think it's like 43, 46 $46,000 and the national average is somewhere around 60. So there's a big, big gap. We don't have that comparison data for staff, but we're also <coughs> asking that we're able to increase our staff salary as well. In other words, we always get the uh, idea from the legislature, oh, we love you, you're doing great, you're helping out with the uh, workforce, you're doing all these different things, you're helping our high school students, you're, you're helping our universities. And we say, it's great, you love us. But there is no romance without finance. <laughs> <laughs> all of you heard that song, I'm sure. <laughs> We are looking forward to saying to the legislature, and we certainly want, we certainly want all of you, of course, you cannot lobby as faculty and staff. I'm the only person on this campus that can actually go to the legislature and lobby. Our board of trustees can go and lobby. Uh, but you can say as a person that you want the legislature to support our mission. So 
I certainly would ask you to do that. And I will send out our priorities by email to the whole campus. So you'll have the, so you can speak with intelligence if you happen to get a question about this. And certainly that is a big push that we're moving towards. And there are other things on here, but those are the two that I want you to know are going to be the priorities that, that I will certainly work for. And I happen to serve on the finance committee of the president. So we're really going to be involved with the legislature this year to say, what can you do to help us out? Those are the two things that I wanted to talk to you about today. And certainly I'm going to open up to you. Do you have any questions? Uh, I have still been getting out to the community, getting to meet folks. And I had a first time thing to happen to me last night. We got some folks that's noise and they know what happened. I ended up playing with the symphony orchestra last night. And you're probably saying, what instrument does he play? I play the sleigh bells. <laughs> and of course, my wife has a video of that. And I'm trying to buy it <laughs> But I have been enjoying just engaging this community and also engaging our faculty and staff and our students. And this will continue, but I just want to thank you for all that you do. Whatever role you play on this campus, we certainly thank you for that. And uh, the uh, five months that I've been here has really been a roller coaster ride, just seeing all the good things that people can see out there. And I, and I know it's all because of everyone who's sitting here. So, again, thank you for that. I hate to rush off to the next meeting, but, but I just wanted to get here and give that to you. And I look forward to seeing you next week at the holiday drop in. And in case you don't know where it's going to be held, it's in Craig Goez Building, uh, room 138, 139, from 2 o'clock until 5. And I'll be there the whole time. And certainly invite you to be there. And we've asked the TLT to be there as well so that we can all just kind of interact with you and uh, just have a good time. Okay, any questions? Before I go, I'm going to ask you to. Uh, Please do something I really get excited about. Go Bulldogs! Go Bulldogs! Thank you. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Right. I next we'll have Dr. Gould, and he'll be discussing strategic goal number one. Actually, board goals. So a little context here. Uh, well, first of all, it's in, usually I would do this in PCC blue, but since Notre Dame's in the college football playoff, <laughs> as a good Irish Catholic, I'm required to only use green and gold in December. So back in, oh, I guess it was June, the Board of Trustees came up with four major goals that they looked for for 2018, 2019. Goal number one was to support student success. And these were the points under student success, increase high school programming, retention, completion, university transfer, support programs and partnerships that result in program expansion, or formation linked to business growth and job opportunities, increase student access to work experience, and connect students to comprehensive college community resources to address non-academic barriers to student success. That's all under goal number one. There are three other goals. It's all under goal number one. So, um, so I've been working on a progress report for goal number one. And when Ashley asked me to do a presentation for it, when I started with the slides, um, for 1A, I was up to about slide eight. And as you know, if you go over in college council, Ashley gets really mad. <laughs> so I stopped. So all we're doing today is 1A, um, which is good news because there is a lot of stuff under 1A. And this is, again, this is the um, report that will go to the Board of Trustees to see how we're doing as a college in these particular areas. All right. So again, a reminder, it's high school programming, retention, completion, university transfer, some of the things we've been focusing on for a while, a couple of years now. So. Career and College Promise, out, every semester, outstanding. It's just increasing, increasing, increasing. This does not include early college high school. 
This is just our career and college promise students who are taking classes, college classes either at their home high schools or here at PCC. So we have 753 Pitt County High School students taking 1,605 classes here at PCC. That's a 10% increase, nearly 11% increase from last fall. And that's what we're seeing every year, 10, 15, 20% increases as parents recognize um, what a great deal we are to get college credit. So we're seeing that continuing to increase. We also started this semester our PCC, PCS Technical Academy, where we are working with Pitt County Schools to transport high school students into technical programs here at PCC. We started with HVAC and machining, got 20 students in there. We're looking and we're talking with Pitt County Schools and CIT about expanding that for fall 2019. But so far, that's great. And again, these are areas where there are plenty of jobs. There are plenty of jobs in advanced manufacturing. So that partnership with Pitt County Schools is just, again, increasing numbers. <laughs> Early College High School, we have 268 right now, again, focused on first generation economically disadvantaged. This May, we will have our first PCS Early College High School graduates in four years, we've got 20 students who are graduating with both the associate degree and the high school diploma. 17 years of age. Um, and we're, those numbers are gonna to continue to increase. We thought that it would be sort of a five-year program where it would take them that extra year to get to college classes. These are really good students. And some of you who teach these students know how good they are. We've got 20 of them who are finishing up and moving on. So that's just great. As well as divisions program for us over fall, we've got 75 high school seniors and 135 PCC college students here enrolled. And since 2005, over 800 Pitt County high school and college students. So again, our partnership with Pitt County schools working with these high schools working, you know, we're now moving back into middle school, working with the middle school, the early college, high school. It's really a great relationship, very positive and productive relationship we have with them. So that's sort of the first part of 1A of goal one, high school programming, retention. We've been working on this for a couple of years now. We're really starting to see the fruits of our labor that, you know, for iPads, first time, full time, 2014-2015, we've gone from 48% to fall 2016, 61%. First time, full time, fall to fall retention. The success navigator retention, 77, 79. What we're seeing in all of these retention areas, all of these completion areas, is increases. We're keeping the increase. All right. Institutional retention. In and you know, from the outside looking in, maybe oh well, fall 20, you know, fall 14, 55 percent, now we're at 60 percent. That's a huge jump. If any of you know anything about statistics and numbers, moving five percent in three years is pretty significant. So there's a lot of really good work being done <coughs> in all areas of the college to build up this institutional retention. And as I was saying, I'll go back to that for a second. Because I was, forget who I was talking to the other day. Um, it was some group. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember who the group was. But I told them, retention is the new enrollment. That's what it is. Because what we see now is as these high school groups really start to thin out. And in another year or so, the high school graduating class enrollment is going to drop off a cliff. So with all the competition we've got out there with four-year schools, with other community colleges, everybody's hungry for enrollment. And the pool is getting thinner and thinner. And so really, it's much better to retain. Just think of it almost from a workforce development standpoint. It's much more profitable and productive and efficient for businesses to keep 
the individuals that they have and retrain them so I want them to get new employees. It's the same thing here. It's much better for us to retain the students we have than to count on additional students coming in the door because those numbers are thinning out. Completion. We've jumped from 1,600 to 1,800 the last couple of years. Uh, part of that is also the um, almost auto awarding that we're trying to do with students to make sure that they don't have to apply for a certificate or degree. But it's also attributable to a lot of the stackable credentials we've been building into programs to give students as many certificates, as much really industry recognized credentials as they possibly have before they go out into the marketplace. Transfer, the other part of 1A goal number one. All right. What we're starting to see in 20, well, 2016 and 2017, we're starting to see the first uh, sort of numbers that were influenced heavily by the 2014 CAA with students coming in. So we're seeing that jump, 384. The most important is the completion numbers, AA, AS degrees. Seeing that across the board in North Carolina, but particularly here at PCC, that We've gone from you know, 59 completing to 72. That's a nice jump. Uh, and it is, I mean, it's been much better for students because once they do transfer, after completing that associate degree, they perform better, they graduate faster, they save a boatload of money. So it's much better for them to complete that degree and they're understanding the benefits of completing <coughs> that degree. One of the interesting things is last couple of years also, we've seen that significant jump in AAS transfers. Students completing the Associate of Applied Science technical degree, transferring to the senior institution. We've got a number of bilateral agreements, two plus two agreements with some of the universities, including ECU. And we're seeing that jump, that more opportunities. I was telling some folks a few weeks ago, we are in the golden age of transfer now. It really is. With the 2014 CAA, with the Associate in Engineering Articulation Agreement, the RN, the BSN, Associate in Education is on the horizon, Associate in Fine Arts is in play. We've got all of these opportunities, all of these pathways, which of course make advising even more fun than it already is. <laughs> uh, on campus advising, about it. Students love this. We have three offices now. We've got the ECU office, the UNCW office, and the Wesleyan office, where there's usually somebody there all the time. And students can just drop in. This is much more effective than the old you know, stick, a, uh, stick a desk in the hallway and somebody will come by and pick up a brochure or something. Now they can make appointments. We're also working with particularly ECU to bring in programs specific <clears throat> advisors from ECU programs and majors so that they can talk to students. Students can schedule appointments, meet with them. It's a much more um, private environment to students who need to go over transcripts and things like that. So we have these offices there. That's work. We received a grant, the NSF Transfer Biology Success grant with ECU, where we have biology majors who are going to complete the Associate in Science degree here at PCC, working with both our faculty, ECU biology faculty, ECU advisors, and sort of sort of piggybacking on the Pirate Promise program. The one major difference is when these students complete the associate degree and the biology baccalaureate degree plan. They're guaranteed admission into the biology program at ECU. So that's sort of the first step that we're starting to take now is Pirate Promise is great, guarantees admission to the university, but really the key and really one of the selling points for students is the guaranteed program admission. That if you finish the associate degree, you finish this particular baccalaureate degree plan, you get into not only the university, but this particular major at ECU. So we're hoping that that not only keeps students further along in, in, to complete the associate degree, but also really um, they see that as a pathway, a really legitimate pathway to get to the senior institution. 
I, best for last. Right, and this just came out the other day. Right? In all of our classes, we've been working on this retention rate, looking at the data, looking at where the different areas, where we need to improve, what we need to improve, whether it's through a certified online instructor, whether it's in embedded tutors, whether it's reviewing various you know, pedagogical methods, whatever it will be. What we're seeing, hybrid, internet, traditional courses, across the board improvements in student retention. The hybrids have gone in two years from 66 to 71. The internet from 62 to 69. So 69% of the students enrolled in internet courses successfully complete that course. Seven out of 10, that's significant. The traditional courses have also increased from 69 to 75% across the board, those increases. All courses in two years, we've moved from 66% to over 72% of students succeeding in their courses. If I had a microphone, I'd drop it. <laughs> um, it's incredibly impressive. You don't realize how impressive this is to make that kind of jump over very limited amount of time. And it's taken a lot of dedication, a lot of air, and it's really been a comprehensive plan by the college. I mean, working from everywhere, from the career coaches and the counselors and the navigators to the, um, the harsh deans demanding quality assurance in their courses to, of course, the faculty, but also the tutors, it's across the, I mean, it, it really does take the college to make sure that retention <laughs> increases, but we've seen it across the board. It's working. We're going in the right direction. I mean, in every, as you can see, in everything we're doing. So it, it's, this is all incredibly impressive. And you should be really proud of yourselves. And this is your Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any questions? It's actually going to get back. All right, we're good. <laughs> Next, we'll have Mike Menina talk about the new Moodle. Glad I went before Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully, you can So, hopefully, everybody has heard about the new Moodle, right? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Not, I got a lot of work to do. But I was asked to come here to kind of give you sort of an update of where we are, where we're going, that type of stuff. Well, the first thing is it's still Moodle. Some people have been talking about hearing the word Blackboard. Blackboard owns the hosting company we're using, but it's still Moodle. Looks a little different, but it's still Moodle at, at the heart of it. Um, to kind of give you an idea of, of how we got to where we're at now, uh, it started in July of this year when the new hosting contract for Moodle was given to another vendor. So that kind of kick-started everything that we've have been doing in the last couple months. Uh, in November, we actually got a new server up and running and started getting faculty access to that new machine. Uh, students, although technically students can get to it if they know how to, their Moodle icon still takes them to the old server. Starting January 2nd, that icon is going to change. They'll be going to the new server. Faculty will still have two icons till the end of February or so. So uh, at the end of this semester, we're going to put our current server in sort of a read-only mode. In other words, you can still go out there and look at stuff, but you can't make any changes. So that we can get everything transferred over to the new server that needs to go. And then in January, of course, students, faculty, everyone's going to be using the new server which a lot of people already have access to, and we'll look at the numbers for that in just a minute. So we've got everything up and running, all of the screen courses are there, and we have a lot of the faculty members who are actually getting into it. And the, the most important point here is in February, actually February 28, 2019, our current servers, all of them, including continuing education, public, and curriculum, will be shut down. We will no longer have access to those. 
So anything anybody wants to get off needs to make sure they get that backed up at least onto some kind of local storage device before that day. So that's the, the main thing everybody's, and we'll be sending out emails and stuff reminding everyone that that date's coming up. So the numbers that we have for the current server, we have 1,708 course shells in the new server. That's for spring 2019. So they're there, ready to go. We have 574 faculty accounts. That's how many faculty accounts are on the new server. That's how many faculty members can actually get in and start working with their course shell. However, that's not how many are in there. We've only had 48% of everyone that can go into this server go into it yet. And then out of that number, only 39% have been into the training course we have there where you learn the process of how the new navigation works and how to back up and restore a course from the old server to the new server. And that's not saying that not everyone, you know, there's 61% uh, can't do it, it's just that 61% haven't gone through the official channel of course. And then out of that, we got a pitiful 21% have actually passed and got the certification saying, you know how to basically work with a new server. Again, that's not saying that 79% don't know how to use a new server. It's just that officially, we've only got that many people that have been through the training. Um, we know there's more people than that are actually backing up restoring any courses, but then they call and go like, well, where's the restore instructions? I don't see them anywhere. Well, if you went through the proper channels, blah, 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 you can get all that. So we're hoping that we continue to get the word out to get everybody in there so that everyone knows how the new server is going to work. They know the dates that the old stuff's going to go away so that everybody gets what they need so we don't have to go scrambling in March and try to get it ready somewhere. Make sure I stay my 10 minutes. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't want her mad at me. So, she, she's getting a bad rep today. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of communication has gone out to students? about the look of the new Moodle and, and what they should expect when they log into their classes in January? We haven't said anything out yet because they actually technically can't get to it yet. We figured there's no need to tell them about something they can't get to yet. So in January, they're going to come back and just be like, surprise. Sure. It, look, it just looks dramatically different. And I'm a little bit worried from a retention standpoint and, and an instructional standpoint that they're going to be just shocked and you know, it doesn't take much sometimes for them to think, oh, I can't do this. Right. So I just. January 2nd is when we're going to switch the icons for the students so that when they click on Moodle, they'll go to the new Moodle site. Uh, they'll be sent directly to a Moodle student introduction to the new Moodle type environment. It'll have some information about here's how the new navigation works. Here's how the new site works. It will have a user tour that kind of takes them through all the major sections of the new interface. It's not a whole lot, but a lot of times students don't need much more than that because they're not having to interact as deeply as faculty members do. So it'll take them through the, the, the new navigation. It'll show them that, you know, how you submit an assignment, how you do forms, all that stuff is basically the same. It's just the, the overlying interface is the only thing that's really changed. And we'll probably send out some emails around January 2nd to the uh, student body so that they know that there's something new. And that gives them that entire week before January 7th class starts. So we hope that's going to be enough. Can I take you back off that a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually shown the new one to a couple of my hybrid and traditional students, and there's a little bit of, you know, like, oh my gosh, what? So is it is there like a a video tutorial that we can send out to them before they leave? Because I mean, I don't think a lot of students are going to log in and look at their emails when they're not in class. We thought about that, and we're going to like send a video out right before Christmas. Are they going to remember any of that? That's what we thought. Now, if if we need to do something different, maybe we do. Yes. Um, <clears throat> 
Duo requires use of my pit CC email for login and instructor privileges. Does it not? That's correct. Will IT be provisioning my pit CC email for CE instructors that are not part of the TCC staff and faculty? Because we have a number of them that are not here in that kind of capacity. They, they only teach for us full time, uh, part time. Um, that's a good question. That's mainly for comment. Yes, absolutely. If we have an email address that is verifiable, that we know who that email address goes to, not hotmama at hotmail.com, we can probably work with that. We prefer to use a, a mop at CC email address, but you're right. Some of the, the part time faculty members do not get a mop at CC. But uh, we just got to make sure that the email we're communicating with does. Is that is that right or is that's that incorrect? That is, incorrect. Yeah. is that incorrect? We fixed it. If so they're, all if part they're employee, email? they are issued a my pit CC. Yeah. So if they're employee. They get it, so <coughs> that's required. That's the, on our part. That's um, we've had to submit specific work tickets to have emails created for those part time staff on the CC side. Again, every student, every employee. We actually get the form on every employee to tell us what it is these people are supposed to have access to. So it's no different than any employee. If you're an employee, we're supposed to get the form, and that's how we know what else we're with. So, yes, they should be submitting a form when these people get hired. Is that resources? Yeah, it's part of the onboarding process, as I know. So, in other words, they should be getting that. That way, we do have an email that we know that we do that So, that is something we do need to do. Make sure that gets done. Uh, we'll go back and revisit the, the student interface. Maybe we'll add a little bit more to that, uh, trying to make sure that the students uh, get what they need. Um, typically, we found students seem to catch up with the new stuff quicker than other folks. I won't tell you who those folks are, but <laughs> we'll hope that, that we'll, uh, we'll get them up and running. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll go back and look at that. Of course, we've only got what? We're going to have before everybody knows. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we might be able to come up with that, that we can still do at this time. Yes, sir. Um, my public Google, how I get is okay. Is it already been moved or is there a way to find it? Uh, we have. Disabled access to the old public Google because everything's being transferred over. We're waiting for Blackboard to take ownership of the public.pcc.edu address, which actually today IT got the form from Blackboard they're supposed to fill out. So hopefully in a day or two, when you type that address in, it'll actually go to the new one. We'll still be able to get to the old one, but it's a different address. We'll let people know that need to how to get to that old one. Okay, so but the new will it get taken over? Yeah, we're we're transferring everything on that server. <laughs> okay, ourselves. yeah, so we get everything over there, and we'll have it running along with the other one. So if there's something we missed, we can go back and pull it up. Okay. Yes. We will have backups of all the courses that are currently on this current server. It's just that it's not going to be something you can just directly access. We'll have to do a restore of that course somewhere. We haven't quite figured out what that's going to be yeah, yet. That would be the bundle that has both of our accreditation. Yeah, yeah. Well yeah, we'll, we'll be able to put that somewhere on the server that people can access. Yeah. Hopefully not. Yeah. Right. Right. And then once we get on this new server and we keep going with that, then eventually we'll have three years right there. Uh, one thing I do want to stress, um, this is a new server. It's a new server to us, a new server to the school, it's a new server to Blackboard. It hasn't been tested with a heavy workload. I haven't been totally happy with what we've had so far with 39% of everybody that's just faculty in it. You know, I, I don't know for sure. I should tell you I'm hoping it's running first day of class. So I'm hoping it is. But just saying we don't want to wait for that other 61% of the faculty to start uploading their courses first day of class. That may not be a good idea for anybody. So try to go ahead and get that done ahead of time. 
And when you come back January 2nd, you guys are coming back January 3rd, I think. Right? That still gives you three four days before classes start. So if you haven't done it by then, definitely do it there. Hopefully that first day of class will go nice and smooth. Yes, sir. Let me just help you out. If, if you wait till January 3rd, you wait too long. It's, it's going to, it's a, uh, it's a little bit. It, it, and, and backup, or especially restores, we're not doing backups on this site yet, but restores are very server intensive. So you get 20, 30 people trying to do restores at the same time, it's definitely going to take a toll. So hopefully we can get all that spread out. Any other questions? If not, remember, we're here to help you. We're trying to make this as smooth as we can. It was something dropped on us at the last minute, so we've been trying to tweak it as best as we can. We're still going to be doing that for a while, but hopefully it's going to be better in the long run, along with all the extra features we're getting. So if you have any questions, give us a holler. Thank you very much. <laughs>
and of course rise, which we're all looking forward to seeing what happens there. Uh, but the good news is these are not overwhelming. There's a lot, and we could choose to freak out. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the screen, there it is. Uh, but our hope is because we have an open forum, because we have the ability to talk, because we have the ability to discuss these things and not just complain and gripe, but say what's going on and how can we fix it? How can we make it better? How do we come together as the community and community college? Maybe we can have a little bit more of this, even despite all the crazy that's coming. Uh, that's why we have faculty senate, so that this is what we face uh, rather than the freak out. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to field them. I'm excited to be under time. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, yes. How do you set up the time of the meeting time for the faculty staff? Nice thing. Uh, we we do uh, we try to do a monthly uh, we try to do a monthly meeting, uh, and our next meeting is mid January. I don't recall off the top of my head. Thursday, still Tuesdays at two. Yeah, two, they're always Tuesdays at two o'clock. Uh, and then finding which Tuesday is going to work best in the calendar is always the key. Sometimes uh, they are in conflict with uh, teaching, so that's why I'm trying to see exactly how you do Do you have a way to probably contact all the faculty? And that's why we do send out the minutes and the notes afterwards, yeah. and if you couldn't attend, at least you can get uh, okay. the, the rundown of what happened. And know this, if there's ever a question, please contact me. I'm, you can contact me directly. Uh, call me, email me, and send a carrier pigeon. I'm happy to answer and try to illuminate as best I can. 15? So, uh, January 15th. Uh, so, uh, January 15th. So, we'll see you in the meeting today. Any others? All right, at this time, I'll open the floor for any announcements or news that may be out. Um, I know it's kind of early. But I wanted to let you guys know that our spring career fair is going to be April 17th for any faculty who would like to put it on their syllabus. Uh, we will be sending out an email next week announcing it as well, but I'll have some people flyers for this for any. Um, you didn't see my email yet. We have the Christmas tree lighting tomorrow evening at 5.30. This event is open to PCC faculty, staff, and our students and their families. So if you've got kids, bring your kids. We've got a hot chocolate bar, all kinds of cupcakes and cookies and sugar that I can just throw at you. Um, but we'll also be showing um, the 2009 version of A Christmas Carol that features Jim Carrey. And um, so it's a, a great time to just come out and kick off the holiday season. The tree lighting is at 5.30 in the GOES Student Center lobby. And then from there, everything else will happen in the Davenport Multipurpose Room just down the way. So you come enjoy um, the Student Center. It's been beautifully decorated by our SGA. Um, they've done a really wonderful job this year. So um, come out, support them. They're excited. There's also going to be a photo booth. So if you're looking to get some family Christmas pictures, we've got a photo booth that'll print out your pictures right there. There you go. <coughs> Else. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try it one more time. Hello, everybody. All right. I wanted to give you some really good information that I want you to, to spread the word about and tell your colleagues, etc. I wanted to give you some in, uh, information about enrollment. Okay. And here's what I need your help with right now. We still have 3,081 students who've not registered yet. Okay, so these are students who are currently enrolled. They're in your classrooms. They're around this campus. They're online, et cetera, but they've not yet pushed that register button and paid. So what we'd ask you to do is we've sent out some holiday to-do lists, check sheets for you to send out to your students, and we would like to thank you all for letting your students know about those deadlines, et cetera. But we still have about 3,081 students who still need to push that register button as well as pay. OK, so if you would please help us out with that. <laughs> I would also like to thank uh, all of all of you, the faculty and staff and the deans who participated in our outreach last night at West Greenville. Uh, would you please give yourself a round of applause? You're in here. I see you. 
I see many of you. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> well, really, there was about 40 of you, uh, along with the guest at the IGCC Center, Intergenerational uh, Community Center out in West Greenville. I'd like to thank you for your participation last night. We're going to do more of that in the future. Lastly, we have an opportunity, uh, Pitt Community College, to be in the parades, parades, plural. What I have found out is uh, that there are three parades, and there may be more. I'm new to this area. I'm still trying to figure all this out. I'm the guy that didn't even believe that there was an actual watermelon festival until I was in it. But yet, here we go, Farmville. Uh, there's a Farmville parade, looks like at 1030 on this Saturday. Uh, there's a Winterville parade at 2 o'clock. And then there's the Greenville parade from 5 to 8 o'clock. Now, here's how you can help. We need participants. Those of you who may be interested in being in the parade, I'm going to stand up there with Mr. Marsh right after this is over. And you can let me know. And I can find your place in those parades, okay? So thank you very much, Mr. Morris. And uh, I'll be waiting up there with Mr. Morris for participants for the parade. Thank you. Parades. Yes, sir. I would like to um, thank everyone for participating in Trio Christmas sponsorship this year. We were able to surpass our goal. Um, this year, we will have a reception for all of our sponsors on Tuesday, December 11th from 12 to 2 in our TRIO lounge. Also, um, on Monday, we sent out an email on the First Generation Fellows Program. Uh, to date, we've had 21 staff and faculty members sign up for the program, so we're, we're really excited about it. Um, our goal is 30. However, if we have more than 30, we have more than enough students. So that would definitely not be a problem. I have flyers right up front, so feel free to participate if you're interested. Anybody else? I want to thank Ken again for doing our live stream. Hopefully, everything worked out this time. I know last week we had the last meeting we had some hiccups, so I think everything should be good. So if you miss anything and you want to go back and watch it, you should be able to click that link that you got in your email and go back and watch uh, college counseling in its entirety. So if you have any questions, you can look at it there. Otherwise, um, we don't have anything new. So don't forget our next meeting is January 23rd in the Davenport Room in Goez. Um, any new topics, ideas, anything that you want to know about, hear about, see about, email me or Ashley so we can get that on the agenda for you and make it happen. If not, everybody have a good afternoon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can edit me out of that time. Don't forget to grab some words. Matter of fact, you're still on. Huh? You're still on now. Still on. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. <laughs>